my god, here we go again. Like I said in part 12 of this series, there's literally no end to the amount of dumb, stupid, and straight up embarrassing ways that people have managed to remove themselves from the gene pool. So much so that we're now on to part 13 of this series. Well, strap in and get ready as we look at even more idiots who ended themselves in the most embarrassing ways possible. Juicy Jenga. Back in April 2022, a thirsty thief in the city of Catalica, Italy, ended up in a situation that was more than he could swallow. On the Easter Monday, he decided to break into a clearly closed grocery store and grab himself a drink. But instead of pulling a bottle from one of the shelves, he chose to grab a bottle from a huge tower of crates that had been stacked up by the staff. And not just any bottle, one from a crate right in the middle. Anyone who's ever played Jenga knows this is a rookie error. And as you probably guessed, the entire stack collapsed, crushing him beneath all that water weight. He wasn't found until the next day when store staff had to go back through the CCTV footage to figure out what caused all this chaos. Well, one thing's for sure, he did a great job of winning this Darwin Award. Clown School. Can you juggle? <sighs> No matter how many times I've tried, I always end up with more balls on the floor than there are in the air. Now, I've seen juggling masters that can yeet swords, fire sticks, even chainsaws up into the air with confidence. Worst comes to worst, they can only really risk hurting themselves. Me, I'll use little beanbags, balls, maybe even eggs if I'm feeling extra spicy. But you know what smart people and even experts won't touch? Grenades. I mean, juggling grenades, that's the dumbest thing I think I've ever heard. No one would be dumb enough to do that, right? Right? <sighs> Let's rewind to 2001 and head over to Vitovic, Croatia, where a bunch of college students were having a big old party. One of them decided to try and impress his friends by juggling a few items, one of which was, you guessed it, a hand grenade. I'm honestly struggling to follow the logic here, but having pulled the pin, he proceeded to juggle with the live explosive. Now, grenades work via a chemical reaction, giving the thrower a few precious seconds to get out of range before it explodes. This guy, for whatever reason, didn't think this applied to him, and the grenade exploded as he was juggling it. The blast injured six equally dumb onlookers, but our Darwin Award winner was removed from the gene pool completely. Well, he might have been acting like a clown, but this guy ended up proving he was the entire circus. You know what you can do for kicks that's less dangerous than pulling the pin on a grenade for clout? Hitting those like and subscribe buttons. I promise, they won't explode. All done, all right. What moronic move have we got next? Car wash cretin. Chances are you have been through an automated car wash before, right? Okay, what's the first rule of using an automated car wash? No, it isn't record a TikTok. It's don't get out of the car. No, seriously, machinery in some of these places is incredibly powerful and can cause serious injuries or worse. Back in April 2022 in San Diego, a man drove into an automated car wash and then, without starting up the cycle, tried to get out of his vehicle while his car was still in gear. Apparently dragged by the vehicle, he ended up fatally pinned in between the left side of his car and the car wash machinery. But here's the thing, no one can explain why he decided to get out of the car. Was there a bee in there with him? Did he think the automated part of the wash meant he didn't need to be in his vehicle? Whatever it was, his car came out the other side of the washer much messier than before. Pretty fly for a dead guy. Back in November 2021, a student pilot from Houston, Texas was allowed by his instructor to fly solo in a Cessna 172 light aircraft for the first time ever. Absolutely exhilarated by the experience, he went out and bought himself a brand new plane a Piper PA-28140, despite not having a full license yet. His instructor clearly told him that he still needed more tutorage before he'd be able to fly solo regularly, and even more so before he could fly his new plane. However, our student wasn't one for rules. It turns out there are quite a few things student pilots can't do. These include fly with a passenger in the aircraft, fly at night without endorsement from the instructor, fly when it's foggy with limited visibility, and fly a different model of aircraft than what's on their license and less specifically endorsed by their instructor. Can you guess how many of these rules the student broke? If you guessed all of them, go get yourself a cookie. 
Yep, one very foggy evening, he decided to take a friend of his up in his brand new aircraft without telling his instructor. Roughly four minutes after taking off, unable to see properly, the plane clipped some nearby treetops, crashing moments later. Neither the student nor passenger survived. Guess he wasn't as fly as he thought he was. All aboard the pain train. I love a good mystery, don't you? Well, back on the 15th of December, 2009, that's exactly what the staff of Germany's U2 subway were faced with. A subway driver was trundling along in his train car when suddenly he spotted the body of a man laying over the tracks. After getting over the shock, confusion set in. How had he gotten here? With the regularity of the trains, there was no way he could have hopped off a platform, run down the tracks, and made it as far as he did. Had he jumped off the back of a moving subway car? And if he had, then why? It didn't make any sense. Because there was no surveillance footage at the location, the police were stumped. But then they discovered that one of the cars on the subway train that had passed over the tracks before the driver discovered the body had a single smashed window. And suddenly it all made sense. This idiot had been alone in the subway car and decided, in all his brilliance, to swing from the handrail and smash one of the windows with his feet. After a couple of attempts, he succeeded and then was promptly pulled out of the moving train thanks to the suction created by the train moving at speed through the tunnel. Nice, real smart move there. Well, if ever you needed a really good reason not to damage public property, here it is. Killer pain. There are people out there who will do just about anything to get their hands on a couple of uh, potent pills, if you know what I mean. And I mean anything. Case in point, back in 2009, a Minnesota man figured that he could get his hands on some narcotic pain medication for free if he staged in an accident and went to the hospital. Safe to say this guy wasn't the brightest bulb in the box. Nevertheless, he figured if he jumped out of a moving car, the injuries he sustained would ensure the doctors would have to give him the pain meds he craved. So our mastermind revved up his car, started driving, and then jumped out of the moving vehicle. There was just one hitch in his plan. It's hard to ask for pain meds when you're dead. Yep, the injuries he sustained from this stupid plot were so severe, he perished at the scene. Well, I haven't got any pain meds on me, but I do have the next best thing. Here you go, my guy. You can have this Darwin Award instead. Fireworks. Lunar New Year's in Kuala Lumpur is really something to behold. The fireworks set against the glittering lights of the city make for a magical night. The thing is, most types of fireworks are actually banned in Malaysia because of the flammable substances they contain. This means most fireworks displays are done illegally, and a lot of the locals don't know how they work, or how to use the industrial scale ones they can illicitly get their hands on. It was for exactly this reason that our next Darwin Award winner joined our ever-growing list. On 2005's Lunar New Year, a man was watching people set off industrial scale fireworks that shot more than 150 feet into the air outside a club in suburban Kuala Lumpur. Curious, the man decided to get a better look at these powerful fireworks and bent face first over one of the launching tubes they were shooting out of. He was peering down the tube when one came screeching out into his face, sending him flying 30 feet backwards and giving him a few fatal head injuries. Now that's what you call a celebratory send-off. Need a lift? There's nothing wrong with going above and beyond for your job, but sometimes you have to watch just how far you go, as one janitor back in 1999 discovered. He was cleaning his building's elevator one day when he noticed something dripping from the ceiling. So eager to do a good job, he rode the second elevator up the shaft, climbed out a hidden service door, and stepped onto the roof of the first elevator. He began mopping up the puddle when all of a sudden, the elevator jolted. In his rush to get to the leak, he'd forgotten to immobilize the first elevator. Unable to do anything, the first elevator rose to the very top of the shaft, crushing him at the top. I don't envy the next janitor that had to clean up that mess. Saw that coming. Copper theft is a huge problem all over the world. Because of its ability to conduct electricity, it's become an incredibly sought after building material especially in the last few years. From January 2020 to May 2021, copper prices in the UK soared by an average of 74%, increasing from around 6,100 pounds to about 10,750 pounds per ton. 
This hasn't gone unnoticed by thieves, who have taken to stripping construction sites, buildings, even railways of the valuable material however they can. But not all these thieves work with Mission Impossible levels of precision during their raids, as one Scottish man proved back in 2001. The electric trains running across Glasgow collect power from an overhead cable. Any excess electricity is transmitted through a solid copper cable lining the rails, which is then routed to a distribution box. Our man, who appeared to have a good knowledge of these electrical systems, planned to saw this cable up in the time between the trains passing when no electricity was traveling through it pretty well thought out, and he might have gotten away with it as well were it not for one small, tiny, and significant issue. The timetable he'd based his brilliant plan on was out of date. As he was sawing, the train began approaching 10 minutes before he'd expected it to. Thousands of volts of electricity suddenly jolted through his body, charring him to a crisp. Let's hope would-be thieves out there take this as a sign. A pretty shocking one at that. Cop shot. I'd like to think I'm pretty good at breaking down stories and explaining things so that everyone can understand them. This is something that back in 1993, a police officer in Illinois reportedly attempted to do, but it ended the worst way just about anything can. Another officer from their precinct had accidentally discharged their firearm into their stomach, unintentionally ending themselves the week before. In trying to explain how that was possible to his fellow officer, our cop in question decided to reenact the scenario. The Darwin Award winner pulled out his gun, aimed it at his stomach, and pulled the trigger. The only issue was that he forgot there was a bullet in the chamber, and he didn't have the safety on. Apparently, he didn't survive. Hopefully, no one in the precinct thought to reenact this reenactment. Shoot your shot. Ah, Florida. Any American worth their salt knows that the citizens of this state are, without a doubt, some of the weirdest in the entire country. From organizing mass Facebook events to shoot down hurricanes, to painting political messages on crabs, their bizarreness knows no bounds. Seriously, if it's a dumb idea, someone in Florida has probably tried it. Which is what brings us to our next entrant. Back in April 2022, three bored teenagers decided to cook up some fun by using some body armor and, in true American style, a handgun. It's not clear where they got the gun, but the teenagers took turns wearing the body armor and shooting each other, recording the whole thing and uploading it to Snapchat. I think we can all see where this is going. Yep, one of them donned the armor and laid himself out like a human target, but the other teen's aim was ever so slightly off, hitting him fatally in a part of his chest that wasn't covered by the vest. Panicked, the two remaining teenagers called an ambulance and reported the shooting. But then, in an even dumber move, they tried to delete the videos from their Snapchat and lied about what had happened. It didn't take long for an IT specialist to find the video, which made the entire situation look even worse than it already was. Hey kids, top tip here. If you're bored, go play a video game. Don't shoot your friends for Snapchat clout and then dig your own grave by lying about it. Considering these two are being tried as adults and could end up spending the rest of their lives behind bars, I'm going to give them two honorary Darwin Awards also. Nice one, boys. Doing Florida proud. MacBook Mistake While I dragged those previous trigger-happy morons over the coals for their dumb gun safety behavior, their stupidity is nothing compared to another bullet-related Darwin Award. Back in March 2022, a Russian soldier in an active Ukrainian war zone came across an abandoned MacBook. Now, he wanted the MacBook, but he didn't have anywhere on his person to store it. No problem, he thought. I'll just remove the ballistic breastplate of my body armor and put the MacBook in there. Now, for those who don't know, MacBooks can't stop bullets. You know what can? A specially designed ballistic breastplate. But hey, it wasn't like he was going to get shot in, oh, I don't know, the active war zone he was in the middle of. Safe to say this stupid soldier didn't make it out of Ukraine alive. When Ukrainian soldiers eventually retrieved his body, they not only found the MacBook, but they also apparently found a stolen iPad as well. From the moronic logic this guy was employing, I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to use the tablet as a helmet. Fire ants. When police arrived at the scene in Rome, New York back in 2001, they struggled to understand what they were seeing. A woman's body was on fire in the grassy area adjacent to her home, and while there was a lighter and melted gas can discovered nearby, there was no immediate sign of foul play. 
Despite investigating the incident for months, the police turned up nothing and eventually came to the only logical explanation available. This woman had been smoking a cigarette and, according to her neighbors, indulging in her habit of dousing anthills in her yard with gasoline. While she was holding the gas can, an ember from the cigarette fell into the gasoline stream, which quickly ignited and traveled up the stream, bursting the can and immolating the woman in an instant. Guess that makes it Ants 1, Karen 0. Superhuman Stupidity How strong do you think you are? Are you down at the gym every day pumping iron? Or does your body look like it's been made out of toothpicks? Whatever it is, I think we can all agree there are very few people on Earth that possess the raw strength needed to stop a car in its tracks. With an average car weighing in at a little over 4,000 pounds, you'd need superhuman strength to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any metal beast. But that thought didn't come across one man's mind back in 2001. Apparently, having parked his car at the edge of a reservoir in Fresno, California, he got out only to watch as his car slowly rolled forward towards the water's edge. Now, the logical thing here would be to jump into the car and put it in park, right? Well, this guy had another idea. He leapt in front of the car as it rolled forwards, assuming he'd be strong enough to act as some sort of immovable object. But he thought a bit too much of himself and the car just rolled over him, pinning him beneath the water, and he didn't survive. But his story does serve as a reminder that man cannot win a fight against a moving car, no matter how strong he thinks he is. Jet-Fueled Idiocy We've all taken a wrong turn at some point in our lives, but when there are multiple stop signs, warning signals, and traffic lights, quickly turning back is the logical answer. Though it wasn't for a taxi driver in Rio de Janeiro back in the year 2002. Having dropped off a fare at the Santos Dumont Airport, the taxi driver decided to follow the road around, assuming it'd lead away from the airport at some point. But soon he was confronted by sign after sign telling him he was actually approaching the runway. Flashing lights warned him a plane was on the runway and ready to take off, but apparently ignoring this, the taxi drove straight on. Despite the completely unobscured 737 passenger jet on the runway about to take off, he continued his journey behind it when both the plane's engines revved up. At their peak, each 737 jet engine can produce a huge 50,000 pounds of thrust. And as you probably figured out, a single taxi is no match for all that force. The engines blew the taxi away, flipping it more than 80 feet into the nearby sea. It was a brief journey that the driver didn't survive. I guess the moral of this story is, uh, don't drive right behind a jet plane that's about to take off. Is that not already a given? Falling for you. Usually when you see reams of safety tape blocking off an area, it's a pretty clear sign that you should avoid that area, right? Doesn't matter what's happening inside, it's been blocked off for an important reason. Well, despite this being a pretty universal understanding, back in 2004, there was a man in South Africa who decided to ignore this entirely. Emphasis on the was. He was sitting in a cafe watching a team of lumberjacks across the way with loud chainsaws cutting down some large, heavy-looking trees. They'd cordoned off the area with tape, ensuring no one would be accidentally smushed by the falling timber. Despite this, our man suddenly made a beeline for the area, ducking under the tape to use the pavement to meet his girlfriend in a nearby shop. And at that exact moment, a huge tree the lumberjacks had quite clearly been working on came crashing down. Despite their frantic shouts, the guy ignored them and kept walking forward and was, and obviously, crushed by the tree. Huh, crushed on the way to meet his crush. If it weren't so stupid, it'd almost be poetic. All Natural Causes I'm terrible at taking racy pictures. I never know what pose to strike or what lingerie to wear. Jokes aside, there was one man in Germany who definitely didn't have these issues. Not only was this guy happy to take photos of himself completely nude, but he also took these photos out in public, and we know this for the same reason he ended up with a Darwin Award. Back in September 2000, our man was in his birthday suit in the medieval city of Rothenburg, taking photos of himself on top of a high stone wall. He set up his camera on a tripod, hopped up on the wall, and started pulling a few poses, when suddenly, he lost his balance and fell 16 feet onto the ground below. The police apparently had to develop the film of the camera to piece this case together, and I bet they were hoping he'd accidentally left the lens cap on. A buttload of sherry. Alcoholism is a terrible disease, 
But with an estimated 107 million people all over the world suffering from some form of alcohol use disorder. But back in 2004, a man from Texas found a unique way to take his disorder to a whole other level. He had a throat ailment, which meant that swallowing anything acidic was quite a painful process. So he opted to take his liquor, er, rectally. Yep, this guy would give himself alcohol enemas. An enema is where you inject liquid into the rectum to stimulate the cleaning of the bowel. However, these liquids can also be taken into the body by way of the bloodstream which is how our man opted to consume his spirits. One night, he was planning to have one hell of a party by buying two one and a half liter bottles of sherry and hooking them up for a, I guess, butt chug? Now, usually, when we've had enough to drink, we just stop drinking or we pass out. Well, our guy had definitely had enough and passed out mid-alcohol enema. However, there was still a lot of sherry all up in his junk, which continued to be absorbed into his bloodstream long after he fell unconscious. By the next morning, he basically embalmed himself. Now, it's legal to drive if your blood alcohol content is below 0.08%. That's roughly one drink. At about six to 10 standard drinks in, your blood alcohol level is around 0.20%, and you generally need assistance walking. Vomiting and blacking out is also on the cards. Alcohol poisoning and a loss of consciousness sets in when your blood alcohol content is at around 0.25% which is like consuming 20 to 30 standard drinks. At 0.40%, your body begins to shut down irreversibly. And our Darwin Award winner's blood alcohol content was a staggering 0.47%. Wow, this guy must have had bowels of steel. Well, that's about it for this round of Darwin Awards, but don't worry, the list is much longer. If you want a part 14 of this series, be sure to let me know down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.